Okay, we're back here live at uh, Hadoop Summit for SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of uh, Hortonworks uh, event, which is Hadoop Summit 2012. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org. We have Tasso Agaros. Yes, Agaros. very correct. Agaros, great. All roads lead to Rome. Co-president co of Teradata, <laughs> Aster, Aster Data. Okay, um, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, great to be here. So what do you think about um, Hadoop Summit? I mean, tell the folks out there who aren't here because they're watching the stream, what's it like here? Mm -hmm. What's the, what's the conversations like? What's the audience? Is it business people? Is it engineers? What's, Yeah, I mean, uh, the first thing I say, you guys are missing out. <laughs> 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 I'm joking, it's a great event. <coughs> I mean, it was really good that it scaled up significantly from last year. You know, they, they're talking about 2,200 uh, people is what I, I tweeted earlier in the day. And um, I think it's interesting because there's definitely a lot of technology, a lot of technologies, a lot of vendors. But as big data becomes more and more mature, you get more people that talk about business use cases mm -hmm. or how can you take Hadoop and integrate it yes. with the rest of the enterprise infrastructure. And that's really something very important. Actually, we had uh, a talk today about uh, what we call the unified big data architecture, which is how do you take Hadoop and you integrate it with enterprise data warehouses mm -hmm. like Teradata and discovery platforms like Aster. We have another session uh, tomorrow about our integration with Hadoop and how do you have bring together with SQL 8. So it's, it, I think it's great. It has more of a business flavor than the previous years, I think, which is a great evolution. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, so we hear a lot about you know, is Hadoop Enterprise Ready, and we also hear a lot about the integration with existing infrastructure mm -hmm. is one of the key things that needs to happen in order for Hadoop to really uh, you know, be adopted main, mainstream in the enterprise. So talk a little bit about how you, are approach, how you approach that problem. Absolutely. So, so I think that the question of, of whether Hadoop is mature or not mature is a little bit besides the point. What's important is what is what are the right use cases that Hadoop can solve beyond doubt, and what are use cases that other tools like a data warehouse, for example, or a discovery platform like Aster, are much better fit. And so, what's missing today, I feel, is an, a good understanding of how all these technologies can come together, and that is something that we're trying. To, to pursue, we have worked with Hortonworks, we did some work to come up with a joint mm -hmm. architecture, and that is very important. So at the end of the day, Hadoop can have a very good spot in the enterprise, but it needs to be complemented by existing and new technologies, and that's just you know, very important for people mm -hmm. to realize. So, so walk us through uh, you know, a use case where uh, Teradata Aster is kind of complementing Hadoop and vice versa. Absolutely. So take for example a use case with something we did at a, at a customer recently where you want to capture all the interaction data of, of a customer across different channels. Say that you have a big bank and you want to capture web data, you want to capture call center data, you mm -hmm. want to capture mobile data. And you want to use this data to understand what are the sequences of actions that may lead a customer to a decision that's important. For example, what are the sequences of action that may cause a customer to leave your company, to leave your business, and go to a competitor? Mm -hmm. To do that, you need to capture a lot of interaction data that's really multi-structured data. You need to store it, archive it. And Hadoop is really a great tool for that, right? It's low-cost storage, you can load quickly, and you can even pre-process data in Hadoop. And then you can take the data and move it to Teradata after we can discover interesting insights, like what are the patterns that are more important to predict churn. Mm -hmm. And then once you have discovered those patterns, you can use it with Teradata to make it operational, make it actionable, distribute it to hundreds or thousands of people in the enterprise, mm -hmm. and really make sure the right business analysts or business users have the right insight at the right time, you know, immediately available. Mm -hmm. That's an example of how you can use Teradata data warehousing and Teradata mm -hmm. Aster as a discovery platform and Hadoop to collect and pre-process the data mm -hmm. to solve an important business problem. Interesting, it sounds like you're kind of describing the big data life cycle. Exactly. Uh, kind of from uh, the, the, the crunching it in Hadoop, mo moving it onto the Aster and then onto Teradata to actually put it into exactly. operation. Very interesting. Exactly. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's going on you know, with Teradata Aster in terms mm -hmm. of your integration with Teradata. It's been, uh, I think, a couple of years now or close to that. It's actually a little bit more than a year, yeah. It's just a little more than but a year. But it feels more than it that. Feels <laughs> so, uh, how is that going, and how are you how are you uh, kind of integrated into the into the larger organization? Uh, absolutely. So so Teradata Aster essentially all the all the products of Aster have stayed independent. Teradata has made additional investments, and that has been great because we've we've been able to accelerate a lot of things that were in the roadmap. 
But on the other hand, because Teradata has an existing sales force that is global, we're able to take Aster on a global scale much more quickly than what we mm -hmm. could do as an independent company. So frankly, for me personally, it has been one of the most exciting things, not only you know figuring out what's the next big innovation we want to develop in the big data space, but how do we take an, a new big data platform like Aster, how do we scale it globally, all the way from, from Asia mm -hmm. to Europe, and how do we scale this as quickly as possible? And, and that has been a great experience. So well, how is the, you know, sometimes when you're bringing in a new uh, an acquisition and a new product uh, into a, an, an existing sales force, there's sometimes some friction there in terms of there might be some overlap with the product or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. How is that process and, and, and were there any kind of uh, bumps in the road or any, you had to smooth out some, some, some edges right. in terms of going to market and really excelling? I, I would probably lie if I'd say that everything was 100% smooth, right? <laughs> you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would probably say that it has been much better than what we expected. And the reason is that Teradata is really a best of breed data management company. Teradata Salesforce uh, are really experts in how do you manage data, how do you analyze data. <laughs> so from all the vendors that would really acquire after and from all the vendors we could be part of, Teradata was the one that was the most relevant to our business, they were the most relevant to big data. And that means that when we're talking to people, we're talking to people that are used to selling analytics, selling mm -hmm. data management, we're not talking to people that are used to sell you know, big hardware or big storage right. or, or anything else like that. And that has made the process much more frictionless than it could, you know, otherwise be. Right, it's a little different than kind of the uh, the Green Plum EMC story where they're, you know, going into a storage company essentially and the sales force that's used to selling storage now has to, now is also selling uh, kind of analytics. Well, you, you so said that, but I cannot, <laughs> uh, I cannot that's disagree. That's it, they're doing a great <laughs> job uh, from what I hear, but uh, nevertheless. So a question I want to ask you is, given your experience as an entrepreneur, um, mm -hmm. You kind of lived through the rebooting of the post.com bubble, get some venture funding, little uptick, little 2008 recession, mm -hmm. the Sequoia memo, who backed your company, um, <laughs> to selling the company. So you've kind of lived through the war. Yes. And the battle successfully. Congratulations. Absolutely. But in this market, I want mm -hmm. you to share your opinion with the, with the audience around, in this marketplace with Hadoop and the entrepreneurship that's flourishing, mm -hmm. What's your advice to folks out there? Because there's a variety of different solutions. I mean, there could be some storage, there could be some mm -hmm. infrastructure. We're seeing a lot of infrastructure activity. Yes. With Splash and some new things around caching and with Hadoop and high availability. And then the analytics side, that's the software mm -hmm. uh, opportunity. So Absolutely. kind of two different, some hybrids. What's your advice to folks out there who are starting a company, lessons you've learned, and advice for them? Yes, so, so that's a the great question. Yeah, and I mean, we, we could be talking for hours. Well, we uh, have time, for something like that. <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> right, it's, uh, why, why not? Maybe we'll get a drink too and have a good discussion. <laughs> but I mean, it's an it's a entrepreneurial rich environment right now. Yes, now on your first point about the ups and downs, there were definitely ups and downs. Um, you mentioned 2008. In fact, I remember we time, our timing was so good that the week that we went out to get fundraising in 2008 was exactly the, the week that Lehman Brothers collapsed. So I, I can take credit for that uh, perfect timing. Um, but, uh, but what I would say is a, is a couple of things. First of all, if you have a, a young company, you have to be prepared. You know, now it's more, it feels more like boom times, which is great, but you have no guarantee that this is going to last. So you need to focus on business volume, solid customer engagement, make sure you deliver as much value as you can and be prepared for everything, right? Don't, don't just feel that this is the way it's always going to be. And that's just a basic survival instinct. Um, but talking about the, the comps that come out today, I do see a lot of new companies that are coming to market. I think that there's two things that I would I see as a pattern. The first thing is that a lot of times people underestimate the time and effort it takes to build a solid product. For example, you know, one of the big advantages of Aster is that we have a SQL, standard SQL layer that we can layer on top of, you know, Hadoop and Hadoop data with the SQL age technology now, etc. It really took us more than five years to build a solid parallel SQL engine. And so, you know, there are companies that try to do this today, but they underestimate the effort. You just cannot do it in a year. It really takes a long period of time. So being conscious about the amount of effort you need to put in to develop a new technology is very critical for your planning and for you know, deciding what you want to do. The second thing is that a lot of companies talk about technology today, 
both small but even you know big vendors you see talking about you know they use the term big data most of the technology description and really you have to focus on business value mm -hmm. what are not so much what is the big data technology that's very important right and we've both been focused on innovation but what are the use cases that deliver value in big data a company that may have a business in the financial sector or in retail or in e-commerce mm -hmm. What are the key big data use cases that these companies should focus on? That's something that we try to push out a lot, but most companies, they're more about you know, talking about the technology and forgetting the business value. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, it will take forever to get good traction. Mm -hmm. If you kind of start with the technology first, uh, you're not necessarily going to be uh, going to find that business problem. Exactly. And, 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 and then you've wasted the I mean, it, the then it's coincidence, right? Then you have to be lucky to land on a good business problem. You right. really have to start from the business problem what, how do you try to land value to an enterprise mm -hmm. customer? And then you have to think what's the required technology to support mm -hmm. that. And there's really no lack of uh, problems to be solved. I mean, they, they, from healthcare to retail, Absolutely. Uh, manufacturing, I mean, you name it, pretty much every, we're seeing every industry being impacted by this. I every mean. industry has, you know, I, I, at least a handful of very critical big data problems. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that most vendors leave the exercise to the reader to figure out what are the most important business problems what we are trying to do, we're trying to have our own experts there working with the customer to figure out these business mm. use cases, which I think is very important. Talk about that in terms of the, the services component. I Absolutely. Mean, uh, how important is that? I mean, it sounds like it's pretty important. And, and how do you, what's the actual approach? What's like the customer engagement like? Yes, that's what actually one of the great things about being part of Teradata. Um, when I came to Teradata, I learned about some, you know, really innovation that Teradata has developed. The first is that Teradata, most vendors out there that go to sell with a salesperson and maybe a technical solution architect. Mm -hmm. But Teradata has one more function, which is the industry consultant. And these are usually the people that used to work at enterprises, you know, healthcare, retail, and now they came to Teradata to help the customers connect the business problems with the technology. So this industry consulting function is very critical. It removes a lot of the burden from the customer mm -hmm. to figure out what's the best use case, what's a really big business problem, what's the ROI for a use case, mm -hmm. and how do you utilize big data in their environment. The second thing is that professional services is definitely an important part of the story. Not so much because you need people to just wire things together. I mean, that doesn't take you know too much time these days with almost any system. But more about help you know get experts that have delivered business value with big data mm. in other enterprises and know exactly what they need to do to deliver that value you know, in your company as well. Mm -hmm. And that's something that if you don't have it again, if you leave the exercise to the reader, meaning to the enterprise, to figure out mm -hmm. how to get that business value, it's just, you know, you risk that the projects may fail, it may take mm -hmm. more time, you may not get the return that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Right, well that's, right, exactly. If you, if you get too enamored with the technology, and that's where, that's where the risk is around big data, is big data all hype, and it's not all hype, but if you start with the technology, and you don't, yes. in a relatively short period of time, find the pr business problem and actually deliver some business value, well then, that kind of says, well, maybe it was hype. Exactly, that's and actually that reminds me of the famous you know, advertising motto that says, you know, an, an advertiser would, just, a marketing person would say, I know 50% of my advertisement <laughs> is crap, I just don't know which 50%. <laughs> well, in big data, 50% of the use cases are crap, but we know <laughs> what 50% is crap, and we can help the customers do the right thing, but not everybody is thinking that way. Well, actually, I just wrote a post, actually, yesterday on Forbes about this whole 50% of advertising, and I use that line because big data is disrupting advertising because now with social data, you can mm -hmm. actually measure 100% of all interactions exactly. online. So what's happening is Coca-Cola just announced, they actually uh, broke the story of Coca-Cola running a prototype in Latin America around direct concerts, Paul McCartney, some, you know, some bands. Mm -hmm. spending, instead of spending money on TV ads, they're spending money on direct media, mm -hmm. cutting the middleman out using Facebook pages and YouTube uh, analytics Exactly. Rolling so, up all so on big data under a company called This Moment mm -hmm. um, in San Francisco. So Coca-Cola essentially cutting the middleman out of the equation. Which is actually a pretty common theme of a lot of innovations that happen today. A lot of innovations and a lot of startups, not only in the data space but more broadly, they're all about cutting the intermediary, right? And that creates yeah. huge efficiencies for the Efficiency. economy, which 
the economy, you know, really needs assistance yeah. these days, right? And that, that's a great opportunity. Well, we're doing a software project, and I would agree with your advice for entrepreneurs. That's uh, really find the use case, deliver value, but focus on the product. But to your point uh, about efficiency, if you can mm -hmm. create efficiencies, you'll make money in markets mm -hmm. that are growing so Absolutely. and that are complex. So I would add to that. Um, Faso, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Thank congratulations you, my on your entrepreneurial success and now the next level of your journey with uh, the big data at uh, Teradata. Aster, congratulations. Thank you, uh, I appreciate maybe, it. Maybe we all get the be best here. analytics coming forward. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>